So welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number nine from the P1 Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level at Excel January 2021 uh, session. And this question here is about integration, part one. We have to integrate this expression, giving your answer in its simplest form. So what we must do here is prepare this for integration. Now there's two things we need to do. One of them is to expand the bracket on top. The other one is to express the uh, denominator in index form and write it as a numerator. So we need to simplify this whole thing. So let's start off by just simplifying it without writing the in integral sign. I'll just take this whole expression. Um, whoops, 3x plus 1. Let me just sort it out. Okay, so you've got 3x plus 2, sorry, squared over, and this is 4 times x to the power of a half. I'll just write it in that form first. Now I need to expand the numerator. Now if this is a, a perfect square um, and it will basically expand to give you 9x squared. You square the first term and then you multiply the two terms together and double that. So that's 6x times 2, that's plus 12x. This is a plus here, that becomes a plus there. And the last term is going to be this last term squared, which is 2 squared, which is 4. And this is over 4x to the power of a half. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write these as three separate terms. Three separate terms. I need to put them as separate terms in order for me to integrate them. Okay, so this is like 9x squared over 4x to the power of a half. I'll write it down here to give me myself a bit more space. This is like 9x squared over 4x to the power of a half plus, and this is going to be 12x, I'll just uh, simplify everything later, 12x over 4x to the power of a half, plus 4 over 4x to the power of a half. So now I need to simplify, so 9 over 4 doesn't simplify, that's going to be 9 over 4, and this is going to be, now this is x to the power of 2, divided by x to the power of a half, remember we subtract the powers. So this is like x to the power of 4 over 2, minus x to the power of 1 over 2 is x to the power of 3 over 2, which is like 1 and a half. And we've got 12 divided by 4, which is 3. And this is like x to the power of 1 uh, divided by x to the power of a half. So you have to subtract the powers of 1 minus a half is a half. So that's 3x to the power of a half. 4 divided by 4 is 1. But then this is 1 over x to the power of a half, which gives you x to the power of negative a half. Okay, you write it as this reciprocal. So this is going to be x to the power of negative a half. Okay, so now we are ready. This is now being prepared and got ready for, for, for it to be differentiated. Okay, so now we can differentiate this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, sorry, integrate it. Well, it's also prepared for differentiation. If we were going to differentiate, we'd have to do the same thing. But now we have to integrate. So this is 9 over 4, x to the power of 3 over 2, plus 3x to the power of a half, plus x to the power of negative a half, and I'm going to integrate this now with respect to x. So now I can do the um, adding to the powers and dividing by the new power. So this is going to be 9 over 4, x to the power of, I add 1 to the power, now 3 over 2 plus uh, 1 is 5 over 2, and I have to divide by 5 over 2. Now when you divide something by 5 over 2, like if I take something, for example, x divided by 5 over 2, it's the same as multiplying by two-fifths because it's your division, you change it to multiplication sign and then you flip the fraction. So this is like multiplying by two-fifths. Dividing by five over two is like multiplying by two-fifths. So I'm just going to do that straight away. Uh, plus, and you've got three x to the power of, add one to the power, it gives you two, it gives you three over two, sorry. Okay, three over two. So one over two plus two over two is 3 over 2. I've got to divide by 3 over 2, which again means multiplying by the reciprocal of two over, 3 over 2, which is 2 thirds. So I've got to multiply by 2 thirds, and I'm going to have plus x to the power of, I've got to add 1 to the power, that gives me a half. And if you divide by a half, it's the same as multiplying by 2. So it's going to be 2x to the power of a half plus c. So let's just simplify this. So the 2 cancels with the 4, leaving me with the 2 here. So this is going to be 9 over 10 times x to the power of 5 over 2. Um, the 3 cancels with the 3. That gives you plus 2x to the power of 3 over 2 
plus 2x to the power of a half plus c. And there we have the answer, everything simplified. Uh, don't forget the plus c, otherwise you'll lose a mark when you, have, when you integrate something like this. Uh, there could be a constant of integration that you have to write down. When that, if you differentiate this to get you back to what you started with, that will then be dropped, of course, because it's a constant. So you must have a constant of, of, of integration if it's like this without any limits. So there's the answer to part 9, part 1. Now we move on to 9, part 2. Okay, now for 9, part 2, which is the last question, actually, in the whole of this paper of the January 2021. Now this is a question where they've told us about a curve C which has equation Y equals F of X. We're told that the first derivative, the gradient function of y equals f of x, when you differentiate y equals f of x, you end up with x squared plus ax plus b, where a and b are constants. We're told that the y-intercept of the original function f of x is minus 8. We're told that the point 3 minus 2 lies on the curve c, the original curve, y equals f of x, and the gradient of the curve c at the point p, the same point which is given here, is equal to 2. So using these pieces of information, we have to come up with the equation of the curve, find the values of basically a and b, and whatever else there's going to be this. We've got this wind step. So we've got to find the equation of this curve, basically. So what we're going to do here is we'll use the first piece of information. Okay, well, we know that the gradient of this curve is x squared plus ax plus b. So we can say that if I want to find what f of x is, I can take the gradient function, which is f dash of x, and I can integrate it. The integral of f dash of x will give me f of x. So I'm going to take this expression, which is x squared plus ax plus b, and I'm going to integrate this with respect to x. Okay, so if I integrate this with respect to x, I'll get f of x is equal to, this will be x cubed over 3 plus, and this will be ax squared over 2, that will be plus bx plus c. Okay, so that's like, uh, you know, part of, that's, that's a start now. We've got a start, we've got the form of the equation, it's going to be cubic as we can see. Uh, we need to find the values of a, b and c now for us to be able to uh, write down the equation. So now, uh, we know the y-intercept of c is minus 8. Okay, that's helpful. So the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So we know that basically when x equals 0, we'll find the place where this crosses the y-axis. Okay, so we can say that um, when x e y and the y-intercept is 8. So that means when x equals 0, y equals minus 8, sorry, minus 8. So we can basically say what, what they're trying to say is when x equals 0, y equals negative 8. That's what they're trying to say. So if I put um, 0 into here, it's going to give me negative 8. So I'm going to, if when I put 0 into here, I'll have 0 over 3 plus 0 over 2 plus 0 plus c. So I'll end up with c equals minus 8. So we can see that. And we all, we all know that this is the y-intercept. The number on its own in a function is the y-intercept. So we know that c equals minus 8. So, so far we've got... From this, we've got this far. We have f of x equals x cubed over 3 plus ax squared over 2 plus bx plus or minus 8, sorry, minus 8. So we're, we're getting somewhere. We need to find what a and b is. So we've used these two so far. Now we've got these two to use. So we know that the point 3 minus 2 lies on c, and we also know that the gradient of c at p is 2. I think this will probably be the most wise one to use first. So let me see if that helps us. So the gradient of c at p is 2. So we know the gradient function is x squared plus ax plus b. So I know that f dash of x is equal to x squared plus ax plus b. And they've told us that at, at, p, at p the gradient is equal to 2. So we know there's a point which is 3, 2. Okay, and we know that f dash of x is equal to the gradient at uh, of c at p is 2. So the grad f dash of x is equal to 2 at p. Okay, now at p that means when x equals 3. So what they're trying to say is f dash of 3 is equal to 2. When x equals 3, you put 3 into the gradient function, the gradient will be 2. So we can say that 
If I put 3 into here, I'm going to get um, 3 squared plus a times 3 plus b, and that's going to give me a gradient of 2. So this is going to be 9 plus 3a plus b equals 2. So we have 3a plus b equals minus 7. Okay, so when x equals 3, the gradient is equal to 2. Okay, and we also know this is actually the point 3 minus 2, by the way. That doesn't affect this particular question yet, so you should write things down carefully. It didn't affect this question. It will affect the next question, though. It says the point 3 minus 2 lies on C. So if, if the point P uh, 3 minus 2, let me write that a bit neater. You have the point P, which is 3 minus 2. It lies on C. Okay, that means when I put 3 into the equation, what comes out is minus 2. When x equals 3, y is minus 2. That's what it means. So I t let me take the original equation, which we have here. And I'm going to put 3 instead of x. So I have 3 cubed over 3 plus a times 3 squared over 2 plus b times 3 minus 8. And that gives me minus 2. So I can use this to make another equation with a and b in it. So 9 cubed, this is going to be 3 squared, isn't it? That's 3 squared, which is 9. Plus, and I'm going to have 9 over 2a plus 3b uh, minus 8 equals minus 2. So I end up with 9 over 2a plus 3b is equal to, that's 9 minus 8 is 1. Take away 1 from both sides, I get minus 3. So I have here an equation from this, an equation from that, and I can kind of like uh, combine them together. So I'm going to take these equations on the other side um, on the next page so I have more space and I'm going to solve these, these equations together. Okay, so here I have the two equations written down. So I've got equation one and equation two. Let's change the color here. Okay, so I have equation one and equation two. And now I have to solve these equations simultaneously. So what I could do here, I guess, is I could multiply the first equation by 3, in which I'm going to get 9a plus 3b equals minus 21. And then I could subtract the two equations. Let me subtract this way. So 9a minus 9 over 2a gives me 9 over 2a. That disappears. Minus 21 minus minus 3 is minus... 21 plus 3, which is um, minus 18. So then I can just cross multiply. I can say A is going to be, um, well, that cancels with that. That gives me 2. So I'm going to have minus 4. A equals minus 4. A equals minus 2 times 2, which is minus 4. And then I know what B is. I can say, all right, 3A plus B is equal to negative 7. I've got 3 times negative 4 plus b equals minus 7. So that's minus 12 plus b equals minus 7. I add 12 to both sides. Minus 7 plus 12 is 5. So now I know what b is. So I can write down the equation of my curve because I've got all of the information I need. Okay, so we have the equation. This is what we've got so far. And we, in fact, we, we worked out that c was minus 8. Okay, so we got that's what, how far we got so far. So now we know that a is minus 4, so I can write f of x is equal to x cubed over 3 minus 4x squared over 2, and b is 5 plus 5x minus 8. So just simplify it finally, because we can uh, simplify this part. That's going to be f of x equals x cubed over 3 minus 2x squared plus 5x, let me just put that a bit neater. I had a couple of complaints about my bad handwriting. Uh, plus 5x, minus 8. So here we have the answer to this question, which was the final question on this P1 paper from January 2021. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching these videos as much as you can enjoy it. And I hope that you um, understood everything fine and, you know, you learned something watching them. And 
Um, if you would like to see the other questions from this video, in case you haven't seen them and you need to see them, there's a playlist that should appear towards the end of the video over here somewhere, which will take you to the rest of the questions on this particular video. And you'll have other questions here, um, which will probably be linked to, say, the application of integration. So I'll have a, a playlist for about integration from P2. It will be um, over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and on the top of the page um, there will be a link to another past paper from p1 you might be interested in watching thank you for watching and um see you soon